Hey guys, it's Tim with LeatherSeats.com. As most of you know, we specialize in manufacturing and selling automotive leather trimmed interior upholstery kits and accessories for all types of vehicles on the road today. Most of our focus is on helping the average mechanically inclined do-it-yourselfer to be able to purchase and install the perfect leather interior. The Dodge Ram truck is one of our most popular selling interior conversion packages, and so today I wanted to go over what is involved in reupholstering the 20% jump seat center console section of the front 40-20-40 split bench. I'm going to head back to our installation department where we will walk you through each of the steps we take to recover this center jump seat, and I'll be back to show you the finished product. We start by removing the console lid, which is held on by a hinge with four screws. From there we lift off the jump seat backrest section as well as the bottom cushion and unbolt the cushion from the hinges mounted on the seat frame. There are four bolts total, two on each side. After removing the bottom cushion, we remove the six screws holding the plastic underseat storage bezel from the jump seat frame. After removing the plastic storage bezel, we turn the jump seat on its side to remove the bolts that hold the upper backrest section to the hinge. There is only one Torx head bolt on the passenger side, but there are three Torx head bolts on the driver side. Two of these bolts are hidden by a pocket that is clasped using a J-clip, arrow clip combination. Once the four bolts are removed, we take the upper console backrest section of the jump seat off of the frame and unplug the wiring harness that provides power to the 12 volt plug inside the console. You also have to detach the female side of the wiring harness from the seat frame in order to fully remove the upper backrest console part of the jump seat. From there we remove the plastic J-clips that hold the carpet upholstery to the bottom of the jump seat frame. We also remove the plastic trim on the passenger side of the seat to finish pulling out the wiring harness. We use a razor blade to cut the factory cloth upholstery off of the bottom of the seat frame. With the frame completely disassembled, we use a stuffing tool to pry the plastic welt cord attachment out of a channel in the factory console bezel.
With the upholstery removed from the upper console backrest area, we move to cutting the vinyl cover off of the console lid section. We have chosen to cut the factory cover off as this allows us to completely remove the console lid foam and get full access to the clips holding the plastic trim on the bottom of the console. The process of removing these arrowhead style tension clips is very tedious because the factory clips are often quite brittle and prone to breaking. After the bottom plastic bezel is removed, we finish removing the console lid upholstery, which is held on with staples. From there we remove the console lid hinge completely. With the console lid upholstery removed, we move to the bottom cushion section of the jump seat. We first remove the release handle assembly, which is just held on by two screws. From there, the cover is only held on with a J-clip, aeroclip combination at the back. Once the clip is released, the cover will just slip off of the cushion foam. With the entire jump seat disassembled, we move to recovering the console lid. We start by positioning the perimeter seam and then move to stuffing the plastic clip at the back of the console lid into the channel built into the console lid plastic frame. With the plastic clip installed, we reinstall the console lid hinge, which holds the clip permanently in place.
From there, we remove the console lid release handle assembly and begin stapling the console lid cover on. We are careful not to push too hard when stapling as the pneumatic stapler can easily cut completely through the vinyl attachment flap. We are also careful to inspect where the perimeter seam on the console lid cover is being placed as we staple around the console lid frame. With the console lid recovered, we move back to the bottom cushion section of the 20% jump seat. We start by turning the cover inside out and position it at the top of the foam. From there, we roll the cover down, much like rolling a sock onto your foot. Once the cover is on, we have to spend some time massaging and working the leather into the final position. With the cover in the final position, we close the zipper at the bottom and stuff the carpet flaps in the cover along with the tail end of both sides of the zipper.
From there, we move on to recovering the upper center console backrest. We start by positioning the cover, placing the blind seams correctly on the seat foam and rolling the cover over the edges. From there we cut a very small hole to allow the female wiring harness to come through the cover. From there, we use a very blunt stuffing tool to carefully stuff the plastic weld cord lip into the channel in the console plastic frame. It is pretty easy to incorrectly position this welt clip, so we are very careful to make sure that the four blind seams in the upper backrest cover are hitting at the four corners of the console lid bezel. We are also very careful when we are stuffing the weld clip so that we don't accidentally damage the seat cover as we are working our way around the channel.
It is only after the cover is properly installed that we cut the full size hole for the wiring harness and frame hinge. With the console backrest section recovered, we move to reupholstering the jump seat base frame. This part is very straightforward. We are basically just carefully positioning and working each of the two covers on and attaching J clips to the seat frame. The most difficult part of installing the base frame cover is stuffing the plastic welt clip into the seat frame. This takes some elbow grease. From there, we install the bottom underseat storage bezel back onto the base frame with the six factory screws.
With the bottom frame recovered, we run the female side of the wiring harness to the bottom of the frame and reinstall the passenger side plastic frame bezel. We then line up the holes in the seat frame hinges with the holes in the console backrest section and screw the Torx head bolts back into the frame. We also clasp the J-clip and arrow clip together to close up the pocket on the driver's side. With the console backrest assembly installed, we reinstall the release handle assembly on the bottom cushion. From there, we trim the excess material from the bottom of the console lid. We screw the console lid release handle assembly back on and close up the bottom of the console lid using the plastic bezel that we were so careful about removing earlier. This part is much easier to install than it is to remove.
With the console lid complete, we screw the hinge back onto the console base using the four original screws. Lastly, we move to installing the bottom cushion back onto the hinges. In order to do this, we have to cut holes in the trim carpet to allow the four hinge bolts to be reinstalled. With the holes cut, we line up the holes in the bottom cushion with the holes in the hinges on the jump seat frame and bolt them back together. And with that, we have the front center 20% jump seat assembly reupholstered and ready to go back into the truck. In this case, our customer actually upgraded his center console lid cover with the optional single reinforced top stitching and contrasting white thread to match the rest of the interior. As you can see, the newly reupholstered 20% jump seat center console combination is the perfect complement to the finished driver's side bucket seat. Here are some before and after pictures of this Dodge Ram.
If you have any further questions about installing a LeatherSeats.com custom automotive upholstery kit, or if you want to see some free leather samples, give any of our aftermarket leather interior experts a call today at 1-866-NEW-SEAT. LeatherSeats.com. Custom look, factory fit.